Once like a bird in prison I dwelt No freedom from my sorrow I felt But Jesus came and listened to me Glory to God, he set me free He set me free, he set me free He broke the bonds of prison for me to sin and things that confound. Not of the world shall turn me around. Lately I'm working, I'm praying to glory to God. I'm going through. He set me free. He set me free. He broke the bonds. can't see him, but Rick Rower is back here playing the piano. Can we welcome him back to the platform? I was trying to see who else is back there. Yeah. Are you having a good time? Okay, good, good. 185, 185, sunshine in my soul. There is sunshine in my soul today. More glorious and bright than glows in any earthly sky. For Jesus is my light. Oh, there's sunshine, blessed sunshine, when the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine. prayer. Some other names were mentioned this morning. Brother Lee's not here. And as you well know, if he's not in church on Sunday, he is not feeling well. So let's remember him. Sister Paula Dodson's going in for surgery this week. 
Spencer Terry, most of you know, had, had an accident with some fireworks this week. He's had two surgeries. That's uh, Julian Ken Terry's son. And so they're looking to get him in a hospital in KU or, or St. Louis or Columbia, just wherever they can do uh, to keep a good eye on that. Any other spoken prayer request? Yes, Bob. Oh, man. Man, we, Helen Marie, we know about ringing the bell, don't we? After you get done with cancer treatment, they, when they say you're done with it, they've got this bell. Man, it's better than a church bell back there. I mean, it, boom, you just ring that thing all you want to. It means it's over with, you know. So thank God for that answer of prayer. It, okay. Amen. Amen. That's the way we ought to be. Let the good Lord take charge. Amen? Anyone else? Well, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Kevin, Terry, would you stand and do that for us, please? So while we're doing that, I need a break. Don't let me throw the rest of them under the, under the bus here. Uh, don't forget that it's in the bulletin, but let me remind you, of course. Crystal, have you got something you want to say about Bible school? I'm sure. Thank you, Crystal. Did you mention the cookies? All right, no peanuts, no nuts, no peanut butter. You know, mark your cookies. And when in doubt, uh, run them through Reuben Henderson. He'll take care of it, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, there's other announcements on here, but the, let's, let's just concentrate on this week. Any other announcements we need to take care of? Brian Allison will be singing for us, or singing, preaching for us tonight. As he, he sings too, don't he? He could bring his guitar. It wouldn't hurt him. Call him and tell him to do that. be a good idea. All right. Anyway, he's going to be preaching for us tonight. I put these kids on the spot. They've been gone. And uh, I, I just thought y'all might want to hear him sing one this morning. How does that sound? Yes. Wait a minute. Ladies' Auxiliary is postponed till the next Wednesday night. Okay. So Monday night. I, give me a break, man. It's been a... I, we have been out. We have been outside the last three weeks, and I and I grew up on a farm, Jay. But now, don't you have a tractor that's air conditioned? It's so, okay. So I'm telling you, I'm still trying to play catch up from the last three weeks. I mean, it's 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 taking it out of me. But anyway, all right, you guys get up here and sing us a song or two, whatever. Welcome Farm Road 1100. Give them a nice hand. All right. I don't have to live on yesterday's blessings to sustain when trials I face. Every day the Lord's providing in a new refreshing way. Fresh manna every day I find New mercies from our Father supply Daily bread from the bread of life Fresh manna every day I find Sometimes it's a truth revealed in his pages or the hand of a faithful friend. I never know when he'll send refreshing. I only know his grace will never end. Fresh manna every day I find New mercies from our Father supply Daily bread from the bread of life Fresh manna every day I find 
fresh manna every day I find. I tell them where all y'all have been, you and Mally and Andy, because... You know, uh, and sing another song. Yet yeah, it was 18 days long. We went to nine states. We sang at nine different churches. We did one service project for a school, um, and we had a lot of fun. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Dean. The Lord is not too busy that He can't read. Down and mend a broken heart. And my burden is not too heavy that he can't hear a plea of faith. God still answers prayer. God still answers prayer. Miracle, he will never fail. Satan has lost the battle when to the Lord you humbly bow. God still answers prayer. If you feel that life is hopeless and the night has no end, there's hope. prayer in his time he'll work a miracle he will never fail satan has lost the battle when to the lord you humbly bow god still answers prayer satan has lost the battle to the Lord you humbly bow God still answers prayer right. thank you guys appreciate it let's turn to page 58 page 58 the old gospel ship trip in the old gospel ship and go sailing through the air. Oh, I'm going to take a trip in the good old gospel ship. I'm going far beyond the sky. Oh, I'm going to shout and sing until the heavens ring when I'm bidding this world goodbye. Oh, I can scarcely wait. I know I'm comes in, I will leave this world of sin and go sailing through the air. Oh, I'm going to take a trip in the good old gospel ship. I'm going far beyond the sky. Oh, I'm going to shout and sing until the heavens ring when I'm bidding this world goodbye. If you're ashamed of me, Too much fault to find, you'll sure be left behind while you go sailing through. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna take a trip in the good old gospel ship. 
I'm going far beyond the sky. Oh, I'm going to shout and sing until heaven's ring when I'm bidding this world goodbye. Let's sing page 54. Page 54, Glad Reunion Day. We'll take our morning tithe and offering at the end of this song. Page 54, Glad Reunion Day. There will be a happy meeting in heaven, I know. When we see the many loved ones we've known here below. Gathered on the blessed hilltop with hearts all aglow. That will be a glad reunion day. Glad day, a wonderful day. Glad day, a glorious day. There with all the holy angels and loved ones to stay. That will be a glad reunion day. Jesus beholding his face. It will seem but just a moment of praising his grace. That stand as we sing the chorus. Sing that chorus. It's a glad day, a wonderful day. Glad day, a glorious day. There with all the holy angels and loved ones to stay. Guys, come take a moment and greet your neighbor. Tell them it's good to see you here this morning. Glad to have you in the service. I saw some really neat pictures on, you know, Facebook. It can be a negative thing or a good thing, but I saw some really neat pictures of Brother Kenneth holding two of the sweetest little babies this week. Yep, yep, that's true. And remind us of their names. Uh, Evelyn, Clara, and Elena Sue. Those of you that didn't know, yeah, I tell you, we got a, a, a rash of twins here at the Macedonia and have had for a lot of years. But anyway, God's been good to us, hasn't he, yeah. Kenneth? Would you ask God's blessing on the rest of the service? We've got so many special prayer requests, and Brother Jess is going to come and preach. Okay. Father, we look to you at this time to say thank you for this day that you provided for us to come together. You know the needs that we have, and we know you're capable and able to take care of those needs. So we bring them to you. And we ask that you'd bless Jesse as he preaches this morning. Give him physical strength. Help him with the message, Father, I pray. And I ask you, Father, that you would bless the offering that's been received. Thank you for that. In Christ's name I ask it all. Amen. 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 Morning. Oh, I'm going to try not to make a mess here. It's probably a good idea I don't <clears throat> get up on stage. I'll tear up that beautiful set we have there. I'll fall over the train or something crazy, but is it not beautiful? What is this? Is this July? 
August, September, October, November, <laughs> December. Five months till Christmas. It's coming up, right? Uh, some of you may have had some shock and awe when you came in and saw a Christmas wreath on the front door, uh, but it's all part of the plan. Uh, this year's VBS theme is the Polar Express, and we're going to learn about some amazing, um, miraculous childbirth that takes place th through the course of this week. So uh, everybody come back. I mean, we're going to have young, old, everybody in between. Uh, we're going to have a good time this week, um, but I will ask for your prayers for that. Uh, to be praying for VBS, for all the helpers. I'm thankful for Crystal and their family and all the work they've done putting into this to make this. Uh, I'm telling you, you don't have to go very far and find somebody that will remember a VBS at Macedonia Church. It sticks with kids. I think we've got, I mean, being partial, I think we have one of the best VBSs in the area. And, uh, and uh, so uh, be in prayer for that, for sure. And I know the Lord's going to do great things. Well, y'all look good. Are you happy to be here this morning? Yeah. Amen. Beautiful song service and uh, good to have all the kids kind of back for a short while until they run off again and do all these things. Good to have Clay and Allison. They're here with us. And I was going to punch him in the shoulder when he went by with the plate while ago, but I didn't. Not that I have much behind my punch, but I think I've got the punch of a five-year-old probably at this point. But anyway. I digress. Good to have each one of you here with us. Hope you had a blessed last week and uh, stayed safe and enjoyed the fourth with your families. Uh, get your Bibles out. Turn to Matthew chapter 12. That's where we're going to be this morning. Matthew chapter 12. We're going to try to make some sense of this. Matthew chapter 12. <clears throat> I, um, while you're turning there, Matthew chapter 12, I, I used to, and I probably will at some point, I, I would like to go for jogs and bike rides and different things, and I, I always thought it interesting, I say that, maybe I'll get back to that again one of these days, but uh, anybody ever seen, <laughs> get the shape right, I think it's an, I think it's an octagon. Cognitive issues. I'm telling you, I have a lot of issues. Uh, it's blue, and it says ADT on it. Anybody ever seen that in somebody's yard? Yeah? You may have one in your yard. You work for them. Okay. I'm going to be very careful with what I say this morning. <laughs> Don't report back to corporate anything, okay? <laughs> be, uh, but, but I see those signs, you know, in front of those homes, and... Um, that's kind of what I want to talk about this morning. Not ADT in particular, but the sign, the sign. So if you're physically able to stand as we read the Word of God this morning, I'll ask one more time as we stand. Matthew chapter 12, we're going to start reading with verse 38. I struggled to find the text that should go with this. This is where we are. Verse 38, it says, Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall uh, no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And the men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah and behold, a greater than Jonah is here. And the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, God, we thank you again, Lord, for this place that you've allowed us to come to this morning. God, we thank you for each one. 
God, that's made their way to this place of worship today. And God, I just pray that, Father, you would meet with us. Lord, continue with us, Father, in this place this morning. I, I pray that you'd anoint our lips one more time to share that which you have for us, God, in this place today. I, I pray you'd hide me behind your cross. Use me, Lord, my, my mouth one more time, God, I pray. And, uh, Lord, that your truth would go forward, God, that we'd rightly divide it. And, and, God, that it would pierce our very hearts and souls, Lord, here today. God, I pray for your conviction. I pray for whatever the needs may be that, Father, you have seen fit, Lord, to meet with us, God, one more time in this place. And I pray that, Father, you would help us to be open and honest before you. I, Lord, I ask if somebody here today needs to be saved, God, I pray you'd save their soul. And God, if somebody needs to be restored and renewed in you, Father, today, I pray that you would do that as well. I, I, I ask, Lord, for you to be with all the prayer requests, Lord, no doubt. Lord, there's many that would love to be here, but God, for physical reasons, cannot. Uh, I pray that, Father, you'd be with them, meet with them, Father, we pray this morning. God, help them feel your sweet spirit, we pray. God, I pray for your healing hand upon all the needs, Lord, but spiritually, the needs, Lord, are mo most important, God, in this place this morning. We pray that you would meet those, and we'll give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> you may be seated. This text here, I, Jesus is speaking to kind of a generational thing. Uh, for their day and their time, but it's not just for their generation, it's very prevalent for our generation and every generation that would follow. And uh, preceding all of this, we find that Jesus is just on assault time and time and time again by the current church leaders of that day, the Pharisees, the scribes. If you go back and read, it's just one, it's just one run in after another with them trying to debunk Jesus and trying to prove him wrong or a spectacle, trying to uh, 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 you know, get him in some way, shape, or form and trap him in some way. And you can go back through and see where they've done that over and over and over again. But the text where we're at this morning, he, he uh, is met again with some more of these scribes and these Pharisees. And they specifically are saying, we want a sign. We want a sign. We want a sign. And they asked him, they pressed him for that. And he said, I'm not going to give you a sign. He says there's been things that's been done, obviously, over and over and over again, even preceding the text that we read today. He healed a withered man's hand. He, he'd uh, cast out a, a demon out of an individual. There'd been signs, right? There'd been plenty of signs. Uh, and Jesus speaks to generational signs by those prophets that had come before and, and talked and shown the amazing, amazing uh, repentance of God. He preached it and and they saw Jonah and they repented. But, uh, and, and, and he talks about uh, the queen of the south that came to hear Solomon's wisdom. But Jesus is saying, there's one that's greater than Jonah standing right in front of you. And there's one greater than Solomon who's standing right in front of you. They wanted a sign, but they were literally standing in front of, I'll say it like this, the system. The system. I don't usually put titles on my sermons, but this one kind of just kind of came. Signs or systems? Signs or systems? So if we go back to our ADT friends, some of you may be actively doing this. I don't know, but I know this to be true because somebody's told me they've done this. They've took an ADT sign and they've put it in front of their house but guess what? They don't have the system. Now, I personally went out to ADT's website and I tried to just buy a sign. You can do that. You can buy a sign for, it's like 12 bucks. It's way overpriced. Anyway. <laughs> <clears throat> but you know what that, that squirrely system did? Whenever I clicked to add a sign, it immediately added one of their systems to my shopping cart. It would not let me buy a sign without the system. But now I can go on to Amazon and there are some Chinese duplicates and you can get a pack of six for like $14. But that's what's going on, right? A sign. It's just something that I can put out in front and make it look like on the outside that I actually have something that I do not have on the inside. I have a sign, but I don't have a system. And there's some serious in, in that. And I, I hope that this trickles through your brain and it starts clicking off and making sense as we talk about this. 
You see, the Pharisees, they just, they just wanted a sign. That They just wanted something that they could hang their hat on and say, this is it right here in front of me. And Jesus is standing in front of them. And, and those signs are just a representation, follow me, of the system. The signs that Jesus did and that he healed a man's hand, that he raised people from the dead, that he casted out demons, they were just repercussions and outward showings of the powerful system that Jesus Christ is and was and will forever be. They were just representations of Christ Himself, of the power of God. It was Him that did these things. And the Pharisees, when they came to Jesus, they didn't say, Oh, Jesus, we need You. We want You. We desire You. We, we need to have You in our, in, our, in our synagogues and in our lives and in our homes. They said, We just want a sign. We don't want the whole system. We don't want to have to pay for the system. We don't have to we don't we don't want it intruding in our life. We we don't want because let's just be honest with you. I I've said our security system time and time before and it scares me to death every single time. I I feel like I'm going to screw it up. I'm going to set it off. I mean it's just it's it, it can be a hassle, right? But but it has a vital purpose, but a lot of times we just want to say I just want the sign. I just want the sign. That's all I want. That's all I need is a sign. So the question is, do you have a sign or do you have the system? Jesus would say it's important. Signs have been given, but he said there's one greater than Jonah, right? They came to preach. There's one greater than Solomon who had that wisdom, right? He's saying, I'm standing right in front of you. The system, not just the sign, but the system was standing right in front of them. We settle, we do. We settle for just cheap alternatives to really truly what we need to be having in our life. I, I thought about some texts in the Bible that kind of points this out. I'm gonna, we're just going to do a little history lesson real quick. And, and you can see if you can uh, see where we're, we're talking at with this. But in 1 Samuel chapter 4, the Israelites were once again in battle against the Philistines. The, that classic battle. You read back through the Word of God and it says, I'll just read some of it for you. It says, that the word of Samuel came to all Israel, and Israel went out to fight against the Philistines. They pitched beside Ebenezer, and the Philistines pitched in Apec. And it says that the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel, and when they were joined in battle, battle Israel was smitten before the Philistines, and they slew of the army of about 4,000 men. So fight battle number one takes place bet between the nation of Israel and the Philistines, and Israel's camp kicked. They lose 4,000 men. And it says that whenever they came back, they thought to themselves, what in the world just happened? Oh, we just got our can kicked. How, how could this be? How, how could this happen, right? How, how could this take place? And it says that, that, that they'd come together with the elders there in Israel. And it says, oh, we, we got it. We know why. We know why we got our can kicked today. It's because we didn't have the Ark of the Covenant. I'm paraphrasing. I, I we didn't have the Ark of the Covenant with us when we fought in the battle, right? So it says that they went and said, Let us fetch the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when it comes among us, it may save us out of the hand of our enemies. So that's what they did. They went back. They got the Ark of the Covenant. Hophni, Phinehas, all of them came together, the leaders there, and Eli, uh, in, or not Eli, but Hophni and Phinehas, they went got the ark, they brought it back, the ark came in, it says Israel shouted, everybody was excited, ecstatic, I, for time's sake, I'm paraphrasing, they were, they were, you know, like, hey, we, we, now, now we got it, we got it, we got the, we got the ark of the covenant, right, we got it, we're ready to go to, to battle, and it says that they went out to fight, it says that the enemy, it says whenever they heard the shout of the Hebrews, they understood that the Lord was in their camp, okay, and the Philistines were afraid. They said, God has come into the camp. 
and they said, woe to us. We're, we're going to get our cans kicked now. Why? Because the God, they have that same God, the God of, of, that smote the Egyptians in the, in the, in the, in the, with plagues in the wilderness. And the leader of the enemy, the Philistines, told them this. He said, be strong and quit yourselves like men, O ye Philistines, that uh, these uh, Hebrews will no longer, they'll be your servants from this day forward. And it says they went to fight again. And it says, what's the number? The Philistines fought against them. Every man fled. There was a great slaughter. And there fell of Israel 30,000. Let that number sink in. 30,000 Israelites died in the battle. And Eli, uh, two son, uh, sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were killed. They would stole the Ark of the Covenant. It was mass chaos. Well, what happened? Well, it kind of looks like to me that they had a sign and not the system. Isn't that a biblical account of exactly what we're talking about? Let me just sum it up to you like this. They, they went to fight the battle and they lost. And they said, well, they, they didn't say we need, we need to get God in our camp. We, we, they didn't say we need to get the system in our camp. They said, we need an Ark of the Covenant and we'll get it and it will save us. And they brought that Ark of the Covenant in there and they were annihilated. And the amazing thing was is that the enemy was the one looking through everything and was worried and concerned about the system. Did you catch that? That the enemy was actually the one that was looking into this and saying, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What if they've got the system? What if they've got God in their camp? You see, the enemy wasn't worried about the sign. Are you following me? The enemy never says, and what we re just read, the enemy never said, you go back and read it, never said, uh-oh, the Ark of the Covenant's here. We're in big trouble. What they said was, is God is there or gods are there. In other words, they weren't so, they were, they could care less about the sign. They were more concerned about the system. Are you following me? And so what the leader of the enemy did was he said, well, let's just see. Let's just see if they've got a sign out front or let's just see if there actually is a system. He said to his fellow cohorts, the Philistines, he said, stand up, we're going to fight. Quit yourselves like men, he says. We're taking the battle to them. And they kicked in the back door and found out. Guess what? There was no system in their camp. It was just a sign. It was just a farce. It was just an outward appearance. It was just a thing on the outside that they'd put their life in that meant something. I thought it meant something. But on the inside, it was empty and swept and there was nothing there. You see, all it takes the enemy to do, if you've just simply got a sign on the front of your house saying, I'm protected, is to go around back and kick in the door and listen. No sirens. Or maybe pick up a rock and chuck it through the window. No sirens. Nobody's showing up. Nobody's screaming or yelling. Nothing's going down. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. Versus a sign and a system, the enemy is going to just check it out. He's just going to see, is, there, is this all just a farce? Is there really just this facade that's going on in front? Or do they really have the system in their life? I'm not trying to advocate sales for ADT. That's not what I'm doing, though. Hey. So it can really kind of shake out like this. Is it worth spending $15 on a sign to protect my life, my marriage, my children? Are you following me? 
Is that really how much I think about my life and my marriage and my, my family, my children, that I would just simply throw $5 in cash and pick up a cheap Chinese knockoff and stick it in front of my house, that that'll take care of everything? I know I'm talking physical here, but spiritually, let's make the connections. Is your life worth more to you and your marriage and your children to say, you know what, I think I'll just have a, a facade of a relationship with Jesus Christ and be hollow and empty on the inside? Are you, are, you, are you following me? Is, is, what does it mean to me that I would just have some cheap alternative when you can have the system, when you can have Jesus Christ be the overseer and protector of your life, right? Uh, if you could have Jesus Christ, the system, be the thing that's watching over your marriage and your family and your children and everything that you hold dear to in your life, what, what would I rather have? Would I rather just have a $5 cheap sign? Or would I rather have the amazing, amazing, God-given system in Jesus Christ? The thing is, I'll answer the question for you. Your life is important. It's special. And it's unique. And I'm not just saying that to try to make your head bigger or make you like me anymore. I'm just telling you that's how God sees and feels about every single one of you. And I know that to be true because God would just do this. He'd say, you know what? I know the cost of the system is very high. Anybody here would say, you know what? I, I, I would. I would love to have that security system, but it, it'd break the, it would break my bank to get it and, and yearly to pay the, the membership fees and everything else. So God did something for you and for me. The system is absolutely free. You see, He paid the price so that you could have the system, Jesus Christ, in your life. That you could have that protection in your life. Jesus Christ came and gave His life on Calvary, died for your sins and your failures and your screw-ups just like mine, and died on that cross for your sins and for your life. I'm telling you, there is no greater ability or sign or wonder to know that God must love you something fierce if He would give His only Son to give you a life-saving system for the rest of your life and eternity. He would die on a cross and He would come from the grave three days later. Jesus is telling this adulterous, wicked generation, can't you see? They're just asking for a sign. They're just asking for something to put out front and look real cool and real, be real nice. And He's saying, don't you get it? Don't you see that there's nothing with the sign? It's about the system. That there's one greater than Jonah standing right in front of you. There's one greater than Solomon standing right in front of you. And all you want is a sign. It's just a facade. You need the system in your life. You need Christ. You need Jesus. What do I put my faith and trust in? So what do we use as signs? Well, let's, I just jotted down a few. Sometimes we use tradition as our sign. Sometimes we hold to traditions of the past, those that went before us. Some will say, well, I'm okay with God because my great-grandpa was a preacher man. Anybody ever heard that before? Some people will. They'll hold on to that. That they've got some kind of special relationship with God. That's their sign, right? That they're going to hold up. Well, my grandpa was a preacher and, and his dad was a preacher. So, you know, I'm, I'm okay. I, I'm in by default, right? But, but from tradition, right? Some people will hold to religion as a farce, right? As a sign uh, to say, well, I'm okay. Why? Well, because I ritualistically go to church every Sunday. Maybe even every Sunday night or Wednesday. I do that ritualistically. I, I, it's a religion. It's just a right. You just do it because you do it. There's nothing behind it. There's nothing to it. That's a sign. It's just an outward appearance. It's just an outward display. We hold to a legalistic type view of that I consider myself to be a good person. I do a lot of good things. Therefore, guess what? What am I holding? I'm holding out my sign, right? Nobody's thinking of Jeff Foxworthy, here's your sign, right? I, I don't know if, that, if that helps you remember this, great. Go there, go there. But here's your sign. Yeah, if I just do enough good things, me and God, we got this. We, yeah. No, no, that's just a sign. That's just a sign. That's just an outward display. Some maybe, 
unfortunately in services or sometimes somewhere in your life may just said, hey, if you'll just repeat this prayer after me, and this may get me in hot water, I don't know. If you just repeat these words after me, you'll be good. And they simply just utter some words that they'd heard somebody else say, a preacher say, and they hold to that as a sign all the rest of the days of their life. You can take it a step further and some would say, you know, I've been in services where they say, raise your hand if you want Jesus. And they raise their hand and they walk out the door and never even, never talk to anybody, but they hold to that as a sign. I had a moment. And that's all I need. It's just a sign. We put a mask on a facade, an outward thing that all's good in here, but is it? Do you just have a sign or do you have the system? Do you have Jesus Christ? It's not just tradition. It's not just religion. It's not just some words you say. It's a life that I have committed my heart and my soul to Jesus Christ as the Savior and the Redeemer of my soul for all of eternity. That He walks with me. That it's an everyday relationship with Christ in my life. That every day I wake up knowing that I'm with, I'm with Jesus. He's with me. I, that I've got the Holy Spirit in interceding and moving in my life on a daily basis that it is a walk, it's a dance with God every single day or do I just have a sign and I'm swept and empty on the inside and guess who Jesus says comes back it says that an evil spirit, the last thing that we read in the text did we not, said that the evil spirit went out and the evil spirit said you know what I think I'm going to go back to that person's life and just check it out and he says that he got back and found out that house was as empty as empty could be there was zero security system it was, there was just a sign probably in the front door. And that old demon went and got seven others and said, Guys, come on. All they got is a sign. They don't have the system. There's nobody there to keep us out. And they went right in and it says that the state of that man was worse than it ever even had started. Why? Because they didn't have a system. They did not have Jesus Christ. They did not have that strong man, the Lord, in their life, and it was just free for the taking. It's silly that we will hold to some sign when we've been given the greatest security system against flood. It says when the enemy comes in like the flood, the Spirit of the Lord will rise up a standard against it every single time. That's in your Bible. That uh, 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 there's, there's uh, 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 protection from theft. When the enemy would come in, I think of many times in, in the Old Testament when Ben-Hadad and other kings would come to the king of Israel and say, I want your money, I want your wives, I want your silver, I want your gold, you're going to give it all to me. Doesn't it say that the enemy, like a thief, comes to steal, kill, and destroy? Hey, there's a system against that. It's Jesus Christ. There's a system against fire. Do I need to go there? That without Jesus Christ, without the Savior of your soul in your life, hell will be the end for your life. Without Him. There's plenty of fire. It says weeping, gnashing of teeth, the place that the worm dieth not. It's in a place of everlasting torment in the flame. But we just want to hold a sign and act like we're okay and act like we got it all together and everything's all right. But inside... We're empty and we're void and we have no security system. Jesus Christ came and died for your sins. He's paid the price for the system. It's free for the taking. God is here today ready to do an installation service on your life. If you feel like in your heart that the Holy Spirit is leading you, drawing you and calling you this morning, don't delay. Don't put it off. Don't wait another day, another time. He's here today. He wants to get this system installed. Jesus Christ, the lover of your soul, the savior of your life, the only hope that we ever have. He's the resurrection and the life. And he's here for you if you'll have him. I'm going to have Dwayne get a song. And I'm going to ask this morning, do you have a sign or a system?
If you just got one of those ADT signs stuck outside of your life and your family and your home and you're hoping in that $5, whatever it is, to get you through from one day to the next day, I'm telling you, it's a recipe for disaster, eternal doom and disaster. But this morning, the hope is in Jesus Christ, the system. Do you have it this morning? I'll ask all of you to stand to your feet this morning. I hope this has made sense. I I know I went back and forth and I just hope the good Lord just made it make sense. But I'm going to pray real quick and today could be the most important decision of your life. The Word of God says every day is the day of salvation. The Holy Spirit is here ready and waiting for you to come to Him and say, you know what, I I don't want to just have an outward walk and an outward relationship or just ask for a sign. I want you, God. I, I want Jesus Christ, the Savior of my soul. You can do that this morning. I love to pray with you. If you need to come this morning after we pray, I know I can, others will. It doesn't have to be here. It can be anywhere, but you grab somebody, okay, if you need the Lord. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, God, this morning we thank you once again for your words of truth. I, I pray that, Father, it would resonate in every single one of our hearts this morning. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit, God, would bring your conviction upon our heart to, Lord, just check our own life and see, Lord, do I, do I have you in my life? Do I know that every day is a day I have with you, a walk I have with you, a relationship that I have with you? Or am I just simply putting a sign in the front of my life and hoping that's going to do something for me? Am I trusting? Lord, are are we trusting in other things? Jesus, you told us simply, clearly that you are the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except by you, Jesus. Lord, this morning I pray that, God, you would intervene in our hearts and lives in a special way, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. As we sing. Do you need to come this morning? You can come for anything and everything. It's open for everybody.
God is good. Amen. Amen. I'll just say this. Our sister came this morning just making sure that she didn't just have a sign, but she had the system. And I believe she got up this morning and knows she has the system. And that's something that uh, I wish for every single one of us. That'd be my prayer. And uh, if it helped me to get, I can't get down on my knees very good and back up. But if, that, if begging would help, I, I would do it. Just to know that everybody knows Jesus is their Savior. Okay? Okay, we're going to be dismissed. Would everybody stand to your feet? <clears throat> All hearts and minds clear? Okay. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you for your attention. And uh, I pray that this sticks with us, that we make sure we don't just have a sign, but we've got Jesus Christ, the system, the Savior of our souls. Anything else before we dismiss? Okay. Come back tonight, 6 o'clock. I'll admit this only this once. Brian Osmond is my brother-in-law. <laughs> if you didn't just catch that, you're never going to hear it again. But... They're going to be here with us tonight. They uh, used, used to preach over at McDowell. A lot of you probably know that and has been working up at uh, Arnhart Church. So uh, come back. Six o'clock tonight is going to bring the word. Anything else? Any Crystal, any last minute things about VBS before tomorrow? Okay. There you go. Don't forget to be in prayer. And uh, in attendance, if you can be, this next week, Monday through Thursday, the program's going to be on Friday night as well, okay? All right. We're going to be dismissed in prayer. I'm going to ask Brother Dave Beckett, while he's holding that pretty baby of his, grandbaby of his, to dismiss us in prayer. <laughs>